You are an evolutionary empath. The world needs your gifts. Hello, sensitive souls, and welcome to my Evolutionary Empath podcast. I'm Stephanie Redfeather, author of the upcoming book, The Evolutionary Empath, which hits shelves November 5th. You can pre-order a copy now on my website at bluestartemple.org or through your favorite bookseller. If you go to my website, be sure to download your free copy of my Evolutionary Empath Activation Manual. Before we dive into today's content, I want to check in with you on last week's self-care tip. How did things go practicing the clearing exercise I gave you? In case you didn't catch last week's podcast, my self-care tip was a simple breathing exercise to clear your energy field by focusing on your out-breath and giving your energetic dross to Mother Earth to transmute for you. I also invited you to share your experience with the exercise on my Facebook page, which you are still welcome and encouraged to do. I told you I would share my experiences as well, since I am working on this practice at the same time you are. I can tell you this is one of my go-to moves. It is so simple, yet so powerful. In fact, my body is so accustomed to this practice and receives so much benefit from it that oftentimes I'll just find myself doing it without consciously cueing myself to do it. And I can tell you that certainly happened multiple times over the past week, and especially during a particularly frustrating conversation with a service company that will remain unnamed uh, that I didn't think was providing good service. So I am sure you can relate. I encourage you to use this simple breathing technique regularly and often. Don't forget to listen at the end of today's podcast for the new self-care tip of the week. I am excited to move into today's content because there is some really meaty, impactful information to share with you. Last week, I spoke about the simple definition of an empath, basically a highly sensitive person. And then I indicated there was a more complicated definition that I would get into this week. I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's dive in. I can tell you that when I started writing The Evolutionary Empath, my spirit guides gave me only one directive. Create a definition. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, uh uh-huh, no pressure. (laughs) But I knew it was important because no one that I'm aware of has endeavored to get granular on how to define what an empath is. (laughs) Where to start? Well, from all the years of teaching workshops and working with clients, I had created a lengthy list of what I called empathic characteristics and behaviors. As I started getting intimate with and examining that list, the qualities began to organize themselves into similar elements. And what emerged from the analysis is what I call the five qualities of an empath. This is the focus of today's podcast. Here we go. Quality number one of an empath. The ability to merge with and absorb the energy of other beings, people, animals, or anything with life force, which stems from a very open personal energy field. This is the quality that causes us to unconsciously take on others' emotions and problems and to struggle with boundaries. When we are unaware that we have this tendency, it makes it nearly impossible to determine where we end and the next person begins. And while it provides us with compassion, understanding, and perspective in spades, it is much more challenging for us to define who we are stay in our center, and inhabit our own sovereign space. Quality number two of an empath. A highly sensitive nervous system. This makes us prone to overwhelm and overstimulation, which require extra vigilant self-care. 
The types of stimulus that can overwhelm are numerous, including light, sound, crowds, electromagnetic frequencies, or too many tasks to manage at once. It can translate into a strong startle response or intense reaction, such as headaches, stomach aches, nausea, faintness, or instant fatigue. Self-care is a crucial practice for healthy empaths and is a subject I'll explore in more detail in a future podcast. Quality number three of an empath. A sensitivity to the energies around us and an ability to perceive or access subtle information stored in the energy fields of all types of life forms. This quality expresses in a wide range of experiences. For example, this quality makes it easy for us to tune into the unseen realm of spirit, and that can include angels, apparitions, the dead, energy fields of people and things, paranormal experiences, past lives, and so much more. It also means our intuition can be wicked accurate. And in our work with clients or patients, we can pick up on things outside the realm of normal diagnostic tools. Empaths show up as medical intuitives, mediums, psychics, Akashic record readers, energy healers, animal communicators, and more. Playing in and navigating these subtle realms of energy are easy for most empaths. Quality number four of an empath. The premium we place on peace and harmony in relationships, our environment, and our own energy field. Given our heightened sensitivities, we will do anything and everything to keep our relationships and environment, and therefore ourselves, as stress-free, calm, and harmonious as possible. In our unconscious years, it usually means we are doormats and let everyone else run over us in relationships because we don't want to make waves, upset, or alienate anyone. In that case, we sacrifice our own truth and needs to keep the peace. How it plays out in our environment is that we can be regularly managing the level of light and sound in our home. We might constantly be tweaking furniture placement or knickknacks. We like to have things that smell good, feel good, and bring peace to our home space. This is where a solid, regular clearing practice is important to keep your home space at a high vibration and release energetic density. And as a side note, if you'd like to learn practices for clearing your space, yourself, or your stuff, I do have a video home study course called The Art and Practice of Energetic Clearing on my website. Quality number five of an empath. Big open hearts and a desire to serve others. This quality makes us inclined toward careers focused on service, as well as overgiving and putting ourselves last on the list. Don't get me wrong now, being of service and loving to help people are not bad things, but it's all about keeping track of your energy bank account. If you are constantly depleted and overdrawn on your energy bank account, then you are not focusing on enough activities to replenish the stores, to fill the tank, as they say. So how is all of this landing for you? Take a moment to contemplate these five qualities while I repeat them. Quality number one, the ability to merge with and absorb the energy of other beings people, animals, or anything with life force, which stems from a very open personal energy field. Two, a highly sensitive nervous system. Three, a sensitivity to the energies around us and an ability to perceive or access subtle information stored in the energy fields of all types of life forms. Four, the premium we place on peace and harmony in relationships, our environment, and our own energy field. And five, big open hearts and a desire to serve others. Now consider the following questions. 
Which qualities do you resonate with? Which qualities express themselves most strongly? How often do you merge with other people or absorb their emotions, energies, and problems? Do you have a sensitive nervous system, and what is it sensitive to? Are you able to perceive subtle energies of other life forms or access the unseen realms? How much of your time and effort do you spend keeping peace and harmony in relationships, in your home, in your workspace? Does your big giving heart get you in trouble because you can't say no or end up exhausted because you put everyone else's needs before your own? Please know there is no judgment here. I was an unconscious empath for over 30 years and I was so mired in unhealthy patterns I didn't even know how to begin extracting myself from them. So please be gentle and compassionate with yourself as you reflect on your behaviors and experiences. As you consider these five qualities and how they outpicture in your life, it is important to understand that they fall on a spectrum, a continuum. There's no simple survey or questionnaire that can definitively tell you that, yes, you are an empath, or no, you aren't. I mean, Yes, I understand we love our cosmopolitan surveys because really it's human nature to want to understand ourselves, define ourselves, and have a sense of belonging. But I don't find it to be that cut and dried when it comes to being an empath. Some empaths have buried their nature so far underground that they might listen to this list and reject it outright, not even recognizing their dormant qualities. And some empaths might express a few qualities very strongly, but others not so much. And all of this is fine, and it's all normal. What I think is an important indicator of, are you an empath or not, is, what do you think? Being an empath is a resonant field, not a strictly defined box. Do you resonate with empath? Are you a highly sensitive being? For most people, if they're in tune with their intuition, the answer registers as an immediate instinctive hit. Yes, yes, I know this to be true. I know I'm an empath. So let's fold in now what I shared last week into this conversation. There are many ways these five key traits can manifest themselves in the life of an empath. So last time I shared six common patterns we experience as unconscious empaths. So remember, unconscious empath basically means you're an empath, you just don't know it yet. (laughs) So that's how it is for most of us empaths during the first several decades of our life. We're walking through the world completely unaware of our special makeup. Without healthy guidance or awareness of these traits, we usually end up living from the unhealthy or shadow aspects of these five qualities, which is what I focused on last week. So as a refresher, the unhealthy patterns can manifest as experiences of codependence, losing ourselves in relationship, feeling responsible for other people, putting everyone else first, struggling with boundaries, suppressing our authentic self, denying our own needs, and feeling regularly depleted. So is this helping you get some clarity on your life? Are you able to look back and maybe see some patterns or connect some dots where you didn't before? Most empaths do not have parents, models, or teachers to show them how to live with their sensitivities or give them a context for what being an empath is, let alone how to embrace it, develop it, and relate to it as an asset. Most of us relate to our empathic qualities as a liability. So take some time to digest these five qualities, and hopefully they can give you some perspective on the experiences of your life. If you are hungry to find out more about these five descriptors and 
go into greater detail, then I invite you to pre-order or purchase a copy of my book because I spend an entire chapter unpacking these five qualities, explaining each of them in greater detail. I provide many real-life examples from clients and peers, and I've already gotten feedback from reviews and other people that have had a chance to read the book Uh, in a professional capacity, that it's so helpful to have those anecdotes from other empaths because it makes us feel not so alone, like, oh my gosh, somebody else experienced something else that I did. So the book is full of lots of experiences from clients and peers. Further, the book contains some other elements of the definition. So what I've given you is a major component of the definition of an empath that I created, but in the book, I expound on it even more. There's a couple other pieces that I go into to provide a comprehensive description of what an empath is. So I invite you to go to that book and purchase it if you can, or you can purchase the audiobook, which should be coming out in January sometime. Okay, friends, so we're coming to the end of the show, and it's time now for your self-care tip of the week. You might have heard of the term earthing. It is a term that has become popular in the last few years, and it essentially speaks to the human need to be in physical contact with the earth for all the benefits it provides. More than just grounding, earthing means you are walking barefooted, laying your body on the ground, or in some way touching the earth with your body. Our modern lives have us very disconnected from our Earth Mother through so many non-conductive materials. So in our homes, we have wood and tile and carpeting and concrete. And even on our shoes, we have rubber and plastic. We are electromagnetic beings, and the Earth is an electromagnetic being. So when we make direct contact with the Earth, An electrical charge is exchanged between our bodies. So let me say that again. An electrical charge is exchanged between our bodies. So this isn't just some kind of foo-foo, new age sort of, ah, yes, let's all connect with the earth. There is an actual electrical exchange that is happening between our body and the earth body. We receive a natural healthy charge from the earth, and at the same time, we are able to discharge unhealthy frequencies. So this completes a crucial circuit. So your self-care tip is simply go flop your body on the earth. Take your shoes off, walk through the grass, sand, mud, or water. Give a full body hug to your favorite tree. A posture that is a go-to move for me is I love to lay prone with my belly just pressed up against the earth and the whole front of me just feeling mama. (laughs) It feels so good and so supportive to feel the ground against my whole body. Now, I understand that for most of you, depending on where you live, we are headed into fall and cooler weather. So that's why I'm including this tip now instead of later in the podcast series. So get out there every day, even if it's just for a few minutes, and see what kind of difference it makes for you. And don't forget to post your comments and your experiences on my Facebook page. So that wraps it up for today's episode. If you're curious about why you might feel like you don't fit into the world around you, the next week's podcast will be of great interest. I'm going to go into detail about why empaths don't fit into the paradigm of Western medicine, Western psychology, and and Western culture in general. And, And consequently, why we often get slapped with inaccurate or incomplete diagnoses or just have constant experiences of being dismissed or misunderstood. Okay, friends, I'm Stephanie Redfeather, and if you want to find out more about me, my upcoming book, The Evolutionary Empath, or my other products and services, please go to my website at bluestartemple.org. You can also find me on LinkedIn and Facebook. And if you like this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Sacred Stories podcast. Remember, my fellow sensitive souls, you are an evolutionary empath. The world needs your gifts. Mm